Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph's Parish on this, the second Sunday of Lent. Like Abram and Sarah, we are called to follow God's word and obey God's law. In today's gospel, Peter, James, and John are given a glimpse of the glory of the risen Christ. Let us pray that one day the full glory of Christ will be ours. Please stand in silence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin our second week of special prayer, our Lenten season, we humbly ask for God's mercy and God's forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we too may rejoice to behold your glory, as Peter, James, and John did today, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The children would come forth, We ask God to bless one of our catechists as they open the word to our children. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else 
but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became white as light. The transfiguration of Christ. A glimpse of the glory that would be all of us after the resurrection. For those of you who know me a little bit, you know that I'm not a big fan of professional sports. I don't even want to go into the conversation with anyone. I just, but I do like the Olympics. I think the Olympics are absolutely spectacular. I tried to watch as much as I could last summer, the Rio de Janeiro Summer Games, and then getting ready for the Winter Games in February, in South Korea. That is, if we still have a South Korea in February. But the games are spectacular. The opening ceremonies, when all these countries come together and they bring in the flags and, and people in their costumes and the music. I love the, the drama and the tragedies of competition, the tension that's there. But I especially like the awards assembly, where the medals are granted to the greatest athletes we have in the world. We witness their incredible joy and glory. Obviously, it's got to be the greatest time in their lives that they, maybe that's the closest we can get to understand what this gospel is all about when one of these Olympic persons receives an award and they're so high on glory and praise and joy but we have to understand that that victory, as well as any victory for us, takes months and months of pain and struggle and discipline and practice and commitment. The long journey to the games is hardly a cakewalk, and I'm quite certain that the, their weight machines and their exercise bikes aren't in their basements used as a coat rack like a lot of ours are. You know, it's, it's incredible to see the amount of work that these people go into. The victory and the glory of these athletes is well earned. And in the Gospel today, Peter, James, and John were given a glimpse of the glory and the victory of the resurrected Christ. What they saw that was possible, well beyond what the world could offer, and the fact that Moses and Elijah were, were there is very significant. We know they represented the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets, which talked about the coming of the Messiah, and Jesus is in their presence in this special way. Obviously, Jesus is the fulfillment of the Law and the Prophets. He is the Messiah, and the glory of the risen Christ was revealed that day to his disciples but I think that each of us, if we think about our lives, there are times that we are given a glimpse of that glory, unless we're not alive, unless we're, I don't know. I can honestly say the night that I was ordained a priest, that was, that was incredible. I think I got a glimpse of it. Or, or maybe when you held your baby for the first time, or help deliver that child. Holy cow, incredible. Or maybe it was your wedding day, I hope, that that was a, such a glimpse of what it, maybe it's not the glimpse anymore, but, but it was the glimpse of the future of what glory can be all about. 
or maybe a special event in your life, graduation from graduate school or your medical degree. But you know, all those glorious God-filled moments didn't make me a good priest. It doesn't necessarily make you a good parent when you, or a good husband or a wife or a doctor worth a hoot. It has to do with achieving an ongoing practice of what this is all about. It's an ongoing vision of Christ. You know, when we look at that, we have to understand that some things have to change after a while if we're going to get to that glory point. Like, just because I, I'm ordained a priest doesn't make it. it it's, it's got to be something that I continually work at that it requires change. It requires looking at our lives and saying, there's some things we just, don't, don't tell me you're following Christ and you're living the way you do. No. You have to work at it. And change is so difficult. Not only the moral changes that we need to make, but simple little changes are difficult. Like somebody takes your parking space over here right next to the rectory some Sunday. You don't like it. That's a change. I told the people this morning and last night, uh, I had a priest from Des Moines that came to visit me when I was at St. Colin Kills, and he went over to Cincinnati one day. You know where Cincinnati is. He went there to the store to get some bread, and he wanted to pray. So he went into the chapel at Cincinnati. Now, you've been there, maybe, maybe not. It's a round, a great big chapel. Um, it's used for the sisters as well as visitors. It probably seats 600 people. And my friend goes to the front near the altar, four pews back, and he's praying. And then he hears somebody come in and slowly come closer and closer and closer to him. And finally, there is a Dominican sister in full habit on a walker, and she looks at him, and Father says, Can I help you, sister? And she said, You're sitting in my pew. But then think about the moral changes that need to be made. Think about the things that really do make a difference that we refuse to change. I don't think we're going to see the glory very well. And the choices and the changes we need to make is part of that journey that Abram had in the first reading where God called him and he had to leave his home. He had to go to a new place as we continue our liturgy today, if we expect to hear the voice of God say, um, you're my beloved son, you're my beloved daughter, he says that of Christ, and what does he say? Listen to him. Listen to him. And then we will see the glory promised all of us. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We raise our prayers and our petitions. We ask God to hear us. For the holy people of God, transfigured through prayer and listening to Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peacemakers among nations and communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholics to come home, especially those remembered from our parishes during this Lenten season, we pray to our, the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candidates and team attending the Tech in Cedar Rapids this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, priests, teachers, and catechists, that they may be effective as they impart the teaching of God's Son to our children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share in this celebration, catechumens and candidates responding to the call of conversion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people of our parishes and those who are be being remembered in this Mass who have died, Aaron, Rose, Frank, Tim, Sieberding, John and Mary Ann Upman, Julie Knack, that they may know the fulfillment of God's promise of eternal life and everlasting joy. And for Robert Gerlach, whose funeral was this past week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us make an offering. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 129, Save Your People, number 129.
now, my brothers and sisters, that my gifts and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults, sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on that holy mountain, he manifests to them his glory. He showed them, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion would lead to the glory of resurrection. And so with powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall
Before our final prayer, I ask your prayers for Deacon Loris Weber's father, who died last night, Vernon Weber, and this morning, Elaine Feller died. So we ask you to pray for those families as we prepare for those two funerals. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be able to partake in things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. So Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn is number 558, O Bless the Lord, number 558.